All right, welcome into another day of our daily devos in the Psalms. Pastor Rick here, and we are in Psalm 105. We're taking on part number two because it's a long chapter, and um, it was the video was long enough yesterday. I heard that. I heard somebody say amen. Put an amen in the comments right now. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, joining in on these videos. I would love it if you could like and comment on the videos because it helps tell YouTube that you think this video is worthwhile. So um, let's do that. Yeah, like and comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I love it. All right, so uh, my hat today is uh, Franklin, Tennessee. I don't think I've worn this one yet. It's possible though. It's been quite a few, quite a few days. Anyways, um, went to went to Franklin, Tennessee, and uh, all I got was this this hat. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So here we are in Psalm 105. We're gonna jump right in, starting in verse 23. Uh, we left off uh, reading verse 22, and it's kind of going through some of the the journey of Joseph and his time in Egypt. And saving his family's lives because of the famine that was uh, really worldwide at that point. So here we go. Then Israel went to Egypt. And Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people very fruitful. And I just thought, you know, it kind of just popped out at me while I was reading this today. You know, like the Lord made his people very fruitful. And that could be fruitful in, like, in this case, it's natural fruitfulness as far as having kids. But it could be fruitful in really any aspect of your life. And and God can do it as it serves his purposes. And so I think it's just good to keep that in mind. No matter what you're facing, no matter where you're at, know that God can come and make you fruitful. He made them more numerous than their foes. It talks about that in Exodus where it talks about them getting becoming more numerous and the Egyptians having to figure some stuff out because they got a little scared about the Israelites' ability to rise up against them. Uh, he made them more numerous than their foes whose hearts he turned to hate his people and to deal deceptively with his servants. This is a challenging verse right there. Um, he sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his miraculous signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. What was God up to in this journey with the Israelites in Egypt and the ten plagues? Well, let's read some more. They performed his miraculous signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and it became dark. For did they not defy his commands? He turned their water into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land was overrun with frogs, even in their royal chambers. He spoke and insects came, gnats throughout their country. He gave them hail for rain and lightning throughout their land. He struck their vines and fig trees, shattered the trees of their territory. He spoke and locusts came, young locusts without number. They devoured all the vegetation in their land and consumed the produce of their land. He struck all the firstborn in their land, all their first progeny. Then he brought Israel out with silver and gold and no one among them, no one among his tribes stumbled. Wow, that's quite a statement for how many people were in the Israelite camp at that point. Egypt was glad when they left, for the dread of Israel had fallen on them. He spread he spread a cloud as a covering and gave fire to light up the night. They asked, and he brought quail, and satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened up a rock, and water gushed out. It flowed like a stream in the desert. He remembered his holy promise to Abraham, his servant. He brought his people out with rejoicing his chosen ones with the shouts of joy he gave them the lands of the nations and they inherited what other people had worked for all this happened so that they might keep his statutes and obey his instructions hallelujah and so i just was thinking about um 
you know, thinking about a little bit the journey of the Israelites as they were in Egypt for some hundreds of years, right? Around 430 years approximately. And, you know, you should think about the journey that they lived, um, the generations that, that rose up and died um, before their deliverance from Egypt happened, still believing God was going to give them Canaan. And and then the the ten plagues start, and some pretty crazy things are happening, and some some stuff's going wrong. And um, it doesn't specify that Israel was unaffected by the first group of of plagues. Later on, in the mix, it starts to clarify that there was a difference between the Israelites in the land of Goshen, where a lot of the plagues were not affecting Goshen. Um, but God was not being random about his work. He was doing each of those plagues in order to tear down one of the Egyptian gods that, that we have to believe that the Israelites became quite familiar with worshiping. And that's not even trying to be all like up in their stuff about it or judgmental. It's just the fact that when you live under a people's rule for 430 years, it's man, it's going to, it's going to stick in you a little bit. It's going to be hard to deprogram. And so really God was using this time of the plagues to demonstrate his power so that they would have someone to believe in when it came time for rescue. And that journey wasn't exactly super smooth. I mean, they had to have their their predetermined, pre-made straw cut off from them. They had to go cut their own straw, but still somehow try to produce the same number of bricks. And that then resulted in more beatings and all kinds of poor treatment from the Egyptians. Yet God had a plan. He had a plan to not just get them out of Egypt, but to bless their socks off on the way out. And so it's all about trusting God in the moment that he's got the plan worked out for you. That even when you can't see it, even when it feels a little bit terrible, you can hold on and you can know, God, you're doing something. Maybe you're preparing something in me. Maybe you're preparing something for me. It's just so much stuff that God did for them. All of the plagues, the actual deliverance from Egypt where people are telling them, get out of here and take my gold and silver while you're at it. I mean, they were just trying, they were like, get out of here, but take stuff with you. May you be blessed on your way. Then they got hungry in the wilderness and they cried out and God gave them quail. And then they cried out some more and God gave them water and like water gushed out from the rock, you know, and so... God is more than able to meet your needs, even when there does not seem to be any reasonable evidence of provision coming along the way. The water out of the rock is a perfect example. Like there, You don't get water out of rocks. That's not how it works. And yet, God gave them water because they needed it. Where they continued to fall down was... Rather than being thankful and allowing that journey to strengthen them and encourage them, they just kept grumbling. They just kept on going. And that needs to be a good lesson to you and me. That we choose what to focus on. We choose what to rehearse in our mind so that we can be a thankful, grateful people that can move forward in great faith because let me tell you about what my Jesus is doing in my life, what he has done for me, what he's continuing to do in me, and what I believe he's going to continue to do through me in the future. He's so amazing. Like, Just take stock today. Just take some time to journal about it. Write down how amazing God is. Maybe even bring up two or three specific things that God did, has done for you that you just want to be thankful for today. 
And then remember his strength. Remember his power. Remember that he's not limited by any circumstance, situation, no, nothing. Nothing that the enemy can throw at him. This good, good versus evil thing is not even close. It's not even close. Jesus versus the legion of demons, not even close. Begging him for mercy. With that, I hope you are significantly encouraged today. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you, and I will see you tomorrow.